Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Couch Crows on DNA Crows. I'm Andrew, your host, The Comet Crow. So many crows! Please introduce yourself, my 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 partner, my, my, my co-owner. Yes, this is Dean, otherwise known as DA Talks. I'm the host co-host on the channel you can, you can find be me. the host you can just be the host oh oh wow yeah yeah i'm you... really coming up in the world yep <laughs> <laughs> perfect and then why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves our special guest geek guy how's it going my name is uh sean alpha and i run uh, the geek era podcast yes he does um, speaking of which we have a lot of questions about the podcast uh today we're going to be talking about um kind of what what got you uh started what you do um the things going on with uh funimation what's been going on with the facebook case that you have uh you you are very very busy oh uh, it's it's never a dull day in my life really. <laughs> yeah so uh oh and i have to say uh, a shout out to insayans um because i saw i saw that she was t- doing your podcast with you and i just uh she she's crazy <laughs> Well, she's she's English, so you know, being crazy is a part of her requisite. Right? Um, <laughs> actually, I I told you about the first time we met, and I, I I didn't tell you exactly what happened. She 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 was coming up with a diss track, and she started singing part of the diss track, and I was like, damn, that's pretty good. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so about your podcast, uh, she she's now uh, uh co-hosting your podcast with you. Um, but can yeah. You, can, can you explain a little bit? Um, I, I know you say you go over anime, otaku culture. Um, I, I had a chance to watch a couple of uh, episodes, and I'm going to put a link in so people can uh, tune into it in the uh, description for the video. Um, but what what got you into uh, into doing that podcast? I guess. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, when I was you know in college uh, studying uh, multimedia production, uh, I you know I was commuting a lot, it, you know, back and forth between you know the the house and getting to college. So you know you're waiting around maybe an hour and a half before the next train. So I got into listening to podcasts, and this is back before you know YouTube even existed. It was still Google Video, which was mostly like bootleg anime with really bad translations that people just sort of kind of uploaded and the, you know podcasts were sort of the, the big thing at the time you know such likes of you know anime pulse uh anime world order and you know those are the things that kind of got into back in the day uh and i always wanted to do it but i never really had the sort of the equipment to sort of uh, have the time really to do a podcast mm. uh and then when the sort of recession hit you know, the technology kind of improved itself in the fact that I was able to start to do the, the podcast itself. And, you know, when you're struggling to, you know, uh, I was doing, you know, every sort of internship or, you know, small term, like two day contract and then that's it type of thing to try to get the career, my career off the ground. Uh, at least with me doing the podcast, you know, it kept me, you know, productive as possible. All right, producing content, and you know, doing panels at conventions, and you know, it was, you know, pushing me to, you know, study more about, you know, animation industry in general, and seeing how all the companies kind of, a lot of them kind of imploded in the early 2000s. So it kind of just drove me. So I. You know, got to interview the, the likes of Karen Sakai when she was really hated by like BuzzFeed and Hunting Post and all those big, uh, big crowds as well as much of a lot of the cosplay scene at that point. And I've interviewed, you know, voice actors such as Tiffany Grant and, uh, Spike Spencer recently. Nice. So, um, I, I, Dean, come on, hop in here, buddy. <laughs> oh, that, I was just having a good time listening. No, that's actually really interesting. Um, <laughs> Because I had no idea there was something before YouTube, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, man. Hey, the the world started like two years ago, and I'm pretty sure YouTube's been around longer than that. <laughs> yeah, no, I exactly. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, actually, that's really cool. You were telling me that you've overtaken um, quite a few of the uh, old big players. I think you're number three in the UK for anime, right? Yeah, it kind of, you know, goes up and down. You know, one week, you know, I'm, you know, the third position. The next episode, I know it could be, you know, 19, 20. But for, you know, a podcast that's, you know, Anime Pulse has been going around since 2005. Same thing yeah. with Anime World Order. 
and you know they have a lot more connections on that side, you know, over in America than you know an Irish podcaster. That you know, we barely get a lot of Japanese sort of guests or voice actors or have that type of community. Mm. That you know, first you have to explain what a podcast is first of all. Until you know, until recently, now all these you know YouTubers are using a podcast, you know, to fill a bit of a slot. But on the one, you know that does the RSS feed and the YouTube channels just to sort of help the promotion longer interviews. Well, I, I think it's good to have um, multiple sources. I'm I'm terrible at this. I, I do my best. I, I need to get better at uh, like making sure we do our videos, getting them uploaded to things like uh, BitChute now. Uh, it's important to diversify no matter where you are because you never know. I'm sure when. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. I remember. I, I remember when you know, YouTube was like the biggest thing in the world, and uh, I, I kick myself for not wanting to get involved earlier when it was easier. <laughs> um, but yeah, at the end of the day, um, you, you never know. Like, uh, I, I, you could you go to BitChute, and who knows? BitChute could be bought out one day and turn completely chaotic and evil. If you go one place and you're only one place, you. I can definitely see why that would be an issue. So the fact that you're, you know, let, let's say something happens with the podcast, well, you can move on to the YouTube channel, you know, you're, you're not. Oh stuck. yeah, exactly. No, I think that's, I think that's brilliant. But um, one thing I did want to ask, um, I don't see why you would ever not want to cover uh, anime just because there's always something to uh, talk about. There's always something, right? Um, but if, if you, if you had to go back to the beginning, um, would you choose to cover something else or would you choose to do things a little differently? Uh, I would have spent more time, you know, with doing, you know, these, you know, guest spots and maybe improving the equipment before, because, you know, to be honest, you know, the first couple of first 30 episodes that I did as a podcast, I was probably like a thousand uh, in the iTunes charts and the quality was just God awful. I, I mean, we, we, we here at DNA Crows know a lot about, uh, first steps oh oh heck yes we do um i remember quite a few failed live streams uh because of not having the right programs um yeah or 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 the the terrible lighting or the audio terrible audio yeah terrible audio yep. is always an issue no no i i i um i gotta say man i if 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 anyone were to like want to um, reach out to you with like news to cover, um, would you be willing to do that, or or is it more like you just kind of see what's going on and you just start talking about that? Uh, what, what what you find people just kind of buzzing about? Uh, well, it, it takes a lot of time, you know, especially with uh, you know any of these stories. A lot of you know, there's people that either, you know, jump on the, the latest thing, list. particularly when it comes to, like, anime news. There'd be, like, I don't know, a hundred YouTubers that, you know, give out a full story about, I don't know, some game that may be coming out based off of an anime, and it turns out not to be true because everyone jumps on a sufficient, a half-translated tweet from Japan. Yeah, so it, it, it takes time. Like, if you take a look, you know, at the Dragon Ball community, it's like, oh, when's the next season of Dragon Ball to come out? You know, everyone is going to use that clickbait title. Oh, it's going to come out in June, April, oh, no, yeah. 2025. Dragon Ball <laughs> is full of fake news on the internet oh like, big time yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm still waiting for uh, uh freaking the fusion of uh frieza and his uh cloned cooler that they're gonna bring back for super in the next series and and they're gonna go uh, uh god frieza and just uh, uh start the next tournament of power except this tournament of power is gonna have like all the universes and and then uh Mar was gonna show up out of nowhere because he's in the manga now and he's gonna come over for the anime and uh because it's not it's only a little bit cooler <laughs> <laughs> But but here the important thing is, guys. I heard it online, so you know it's true. Oh yeah. Oh man, I I hate the fake Dragon Ball news. But there is something that uh, I I think is a little bit more important right now than um than than my little side adventures into Dragon Ball. Um, the f case that you were talking to me about um, against Facebook, uh, you're saying it's a it looks like it's an international lawsuit involving a few different locations. Yes. So the the backstory about this, uh, it, it's been covered by a, a lot of the the big press at the moment. Is uh, so the 
you know, uh, a lot of us were hired under the pretense of being contractors uh, working at Facebook. And just like with anyone working a contract job, we, you know, hoping to get into Facebook properly. Unfortunately, you know, the job has been officially deemed by, you know, both the New York Times and a bunch of other ones, the worst job in IT ever. So my job uh, entailed basically uh, going through maybe 300, 400 tickets a day of everything from hate speech to, uh, because of YouTube and I don't want to demonetize you, People doing bad things to children. <laughs> now, so you said, um, I just want to ask a real quick question. Was hate speech clearly defined? Ah, uh, see, that, that, uh, this, this is the thing. And it ha has been talked about before, so I, you know, I'm not in breach of NDA because it's been broken so many times now at this point. Uh, there is multiple levels of hate speech and trying to understand the context of hate speech. For example, like, are they talking about, you know, someone saying the word, or are they just using the word, or is it self-referential? And there's different categories of hate speech. It's oh, like wow. four or five. So, so, like... so you could have a category five hate speech. It's, it's a coming. It's coming in like a tsunami of hate speech. Yeah, but you don't know if yeah. it's going to be a category one or a category five until somebody, like, arbitrarily decides how they felt about what you said, and they'll assign oh, it. Oh, yeah. Based on yeah, like seventy percent a... of the stuff, that, you know, is it, it's it, you know someone reports it. It could be you can end up reporting yourself by accident. Oh, we, be, we, you we, know, we we've seen that happen. You know, and you know, people will report the most mundane things ever. Like one of the things, like someone may report, you know, happy birthday to someone, and they just are pissed off at that person, so they'll report happy birthday. Yeah, I. Uh... I mean, like, we, we've done a few videos about um, social media censorship, and, and the, the way you just described that whole thing with Facebook is just, that, that is, that's fucking stupid. Like, I, I, yeah, I, so... I, it's different because, you know, we have freedom of speech over here, like, clearly enshrined in our, uh, in our laws, right? Like, it's something you can't mess with over here. But, you know, since we've had the rise of social media companies, it's very limited. Uh, when you're on Twitter, when you're on Facebook, and I mean, Facebook is creepy for so many reasons beyond just the the overly censorious nature. I mean, there was that report that uh, um, what Zuckerberg was looking into people that were sharing a meme calling him an alien, and I'm going like, dude, that's creepy as fuck. Oh yeah, and uh, funny little fact, you know, a lot of those memes were created by you know Facebook people. A lot of the interns would be creating those memes. <laughs> like you know, from the from the nature of our job, uh, from from our job, it was you know it starts off as a job and it easily consumes you know every end of your being until you're just kind of emotionally drained out. And this, this is the reason why the lawsuit is happening at the moment. So, you know, you're dealing with every sort of extreme case from, like, ISIS footage to, uh, you know, hate groups, KKK. We've dealt with all of that. And this is just in, in Ireland because as long as it's spoken in English, to be reported by an Irish person, it'll end up in my queue. Yeah, so, you know, you're dealing with all this type of stuff, and a lot of us, you know, you, I was working maybe 6 o'clock in the evening to about 2 o'clock in the morning, and you're dealing with this content, and the last thing you see when, you, you know, before you close your eyes is, you know, someone's head being cut off. Oh, man. And, and so, like, yeah, it, that, it kind of affected oh. a lot of our health, so. Well, yeah, they. To, I gotta ask, right, only because... I, I get that you're watching videos and everything, but even then, like, usually if you're going to, uh, they're going to have you see something traumatic, uh, that they'll, they'll give you, like, counseling or something if you're forced to watch that. But it sounds like they're just having people, like, monitor that content and then just, like, leave them on their own. You know, you watch someone be, get their freaking head chopped off, you know, 50 times. I imagine that's probably going to mess you up. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's the thing, like, that they have a counseling service, but it's like one hour of talking to a guy that can't do anything to help you through the situation. And then you go back in to do another 
I don't know, five or six videos of dealing with that exact content. Yeah. And you'll have to watch, you know, the full 15 minutes because, I know, the ISIS footage, alright, the guy's being head cut off, is he praising ISIS, or is he just killing a guy for no particular reason? But, but I, I don't you know, get, like, you what, have to... they, they make you watch and determine that? Yeah. yeah, that seems unnecessary. It seems that, that, like that, either way, it's, it's yeah, no, no, be, be, that that's beyond unnecessary. Look, at the end of the day, someone got their head chopped off. That's content that shouldn't be on Facebook's platform. Why are they then telling their their their, their staff <laughs> to go watch that video? fully like the entire thing and give them a synopsis on who's doing what like that's that is what the hell is facebook doing it's like they want to have their own fucking government it's weird oh yeah like there are, so for example i made a proposal to facebook uh just just before the the toronto incident I was trying to get rid of Insults and turfs off the, the platform using their, their own terminology. Create the database to post it. Here's a list of tickets that, you know, all have the stuff that are very borderline, you know, inciting violence towards, you know, males, females. And when is that happening? Literally within a few weeks of that proposal being denied, the Toronto incident happened. And the guy killed, I think it was like 15, 16 people where he drove over a bunch of women. Oh. Yeah. And then, literally a month later, the bunch of uh, turf women invade the, the LGBT parade in London. I was like, well, this stuff could have been prevented. So essentially what ends up happening is, you, you know, you're doing this job and you're constantly under pressure. You have to keep up 98% uh, quality so everything is graded. So to have someone else making sure that you make the right calls all the time. So, so, you're, so, so you have, on, you're constantly on, on, under fear. Yeah. On, on, on top of the fact that they're making you watch this shit, they're, they're, they're making you watch all of it and give them a breakdown of what's going on with the parties involved in beheading videos rather than just getting rid of said beheading videos. It took years for anything to be sort of pushed through the system. For example, you know, when all these incels, they're praising, you know, Elliot Rogers or your man in Florida, that didn't, that didn't even, uh, all the stuff didn't even get on the ban list until, uh, geez, I was working 2017, 2018, and Elliot Rogers was, was what, 2013? You know, like, that, that's a five-year difference of, you know, people online praising the serial killer. Ah, oh, man. But I, the thing is, right, I mean, it should be simple, right? If someone's making an actual threat um, of violence or actual harassment, harassment's not criticism. Harassment would be uh, someone trying, you know, like stalking you, right? Um, it should be that simple, right? Those, those are actual crimes. Um, and, and Facebook could, could act on those. And, you know, someone's posting images of them, you know, killing people, uh, that should just be removed from their platform. And if, you know, it's a terrorist group, then, then save the, save the footage and shoot it over to the government to deal with. I just, I have no clue. I have no understanding as to why Facebook thinks it's appropriate to, to, to hire people to sit there and look through ISIS kill videos and give synopsis on it. I mean, we have people in the government to do that that are highly trained. <laughs> you know, I, I why, why are you just hiring people, shoving them into an office and, and then putting pressure on them to work fucking eight hours uh, into into fucking like four in the morning, two in the morning, whatever. Right. Like what? What? Oh yeah, and then because of the nature of the contract, and this is the thing with like Facebook and a lot of big IT companies have this major problem. Your uh, your contract can change depending on what the company wants you to work. So it could be you know originally my contract was a five day a week contract, and then it became work whatever what the company wants you. So it became from five days to working weekends and you have one day off during the week and then an extra day on the weekend and you're just burnt out by the end of it. Yeah, because they sign you up on a contract, you know, to, to work this set amount of time, but in your contract they can basically change the hours that you work. Exactly. Yeah, that's bullshit. It's not a contract then. It's just 
you, you basically... It sounds like per diem. <laughs> That's what it. I uh, man, I this I, I I know Facebook's scummy, right? And there's a lot of garbage that Facebook's done. Um, you basically have them uh, in a pissing match with a bunch of different governments now um, over whether or not they're actually going to sit there and uh, you know agree to come in and speak to these people. And I'm sitting there going, man, it's 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 a little concerning that facebook acts like it's its own little it's its own little uh principality right you 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 can't you can't you can't speak to facebook you can't see what facebook has facebook is just going to operate like its own little government i'm like oh yeah one of these days i guarantee you right because facebook's already trying to get into um into currency yeah i guarantee you one of these days, Facebook or one of these fucking social media companies is going to get really smart and get get into private security. Well, you know, uh, and you know the whole story with uh, Lucky Palmer. L- Lucky Palmer was actually a part of Facebook when the Oculus Rift got bought. Yeah. And he was essentially sacked from his own company, or essentially bought out, because one, he didn't attend all the meetings, and... The names can be very mundane, but he's in such a high position, he can pretty much do whatever he wants. And he yeah. spent like 15000 just on meme posters during the election saying, you know, Hillary is an alien, stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny, though. Yeah, he's, funny. He's, a tw- he's a 27, 28-year-old, you know, genius inventor. He's like Elon Musk, you know. Let him do his own thing because as long as he's productive and creating all these really cool contractions, you know, what, what's, you know, it's going to help the company regardless. And now he's working for the U.S. military on, you know, surveillance and drone technology. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And on the weekends, he goes to like anime conventions with his really hot girlfriend. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> a pretty good, you know, like, well, he's, he's a millionaire. He's working on military contracts. And on the weekend, he cosplays as Raiden from Metal Gear Solid. Aw, oh, dude. Fucking guy's a bro. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? That that seems like a, a, a much more positive uh, note to end the Facebook uh, <laughs> uh, stuff on. <laughs> oh, so, 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 so we went from... Uh, we, we went from... Uh, uh, Facebook's uh, uh, weird <clears throat> obsession with watching ISIS kill videos and giving synopsis on them to uh, a, a really cool dude who who works for the military and uh, attends anime conventions. <laughs> I love it. Okay. And it's a, a great segue into the whole Funimation thing. Yes, it is. Speaking <laughs> of which... A, that's one hell of a pivot. It is. Um, yes, now. Uh, okay, let's go right back into it. So, uh, regarding the Funimation uh, leaks, uh, yeah, Funimation uh, was trending on Twitter for more than a day, um, and internationally, too. Uh, this stuff is pretty crazy. You had, um, uh, I think it was Yuki uh, Matsuzaki uh, came, came out, saw this, and put out a tweet in Japanese to Toei to get them to look into all of this. I'm like, oh, man. I... I, I have faith because um, obviously the Funimation stuff is all related to uh, uh, the Vic Mignogna situation. Um, it's not so much the jokes, right? I'll, I'll I'll laugh at some of the things that they recorded. I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not overly sensitive. I, I did a video on. I'm like, yeah, man, I watched South Park. Believe me, South 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 Park will get <laughs> will go way worse. Uh, no, I don't think many people were offended that, by that's the what I'm, jokes themselves. Exactly. I don't think many people are. I mean, I know I've seen some posts, but I'm watch. I'm I'm like looking at these tweets from you know people in Kick Vic. You know, a thousand likes. Um, why are these? Well, why these are just outtakes? It's like it's got nothing to do. First off, they ain't outtakes. <laughs> uh, so somebody, some somebody uh, named named Chris Sabat, uh, uh, voice of Vegeta. Um, may, maybe maybe people have heard of this guy. Uh, did a four minute hentai audio drama where he rapes himself using sound effects and and licensed music you know like <laughs> he, went, he went a little bit too far right and they saved this all 
So the the point isn't the jokes. The point is their behavior, the things that they do, the things that they obviously are okay with, and then them saying that they're going to fire Vic because he, he made a joke that they found offensive. I'm going like really. What 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 was the joke that he made that was so that that that, that, that breached your black little hearts? I wonder. First of all, if you're going to compare that silly gang rape Dragon Ball joke, which was silly and fun, to the disgusting, terrible jelly bean joke, you're just a monster. <laughs> oh, man. And, and the people coming out with, uh, uh, oh, man, this is this is decades ago. Bro, it's not the fact that it's decades ago. First off, these, these people are making allegations from decades ago. Sh- sh- stupid crap that they want to like uh, uh, bring to the table, stuff that is completely irrelevant. Uh, uh, bringing up interactions with Vic that didn't even happen. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss the, uh, the the latest A N N article uh, because somehow the most trusted name in anime news missed this major story that this. Major... Oh, there's no update on A uh, N N. Oh, huh? really? I- I've been following, you know. AMM has slowly been declining. The fact that the, the latest answer man is after re- resigning from the company now? Yeah. We had a final post there only, uh, I think it was last week. So that's kind of the big sort of update. The fact that now it's like, well, now we're burning out these people. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going through their site, right? And um, the, the story that they chose to run, which is really dumb, right? The, the story that they chose to run was on the uh, the voice actor whose name I'm forgetting but is obviously not that much of an important person uh, coming out and, and basically saying um, I lied. I remember it happening and I've told this story to so many people but I lied. Um, and, and maybe there was a different panel that we were at because Vic was just such a creep. Um, but um, but apparently, I saw the photos, and uh, I maybe remembered things wrong, but I know that Vic was a creep. I'm reading this article, and these idiots posted this article about the whole Vic Mignogna thing, and yet, to this day, have still not run any story about how Funimation was trending on Twitter for more than a day internationally, and you've had a Japanese VA come out against them, saying he's going to report everything to Toei. Somehow... The internet's most trusted anime news source. I, I'm, I'm on their website, and I and I see it here. It's it's it says Anime News Network. The internet's most trusted anime news source somehow missed Funimation trending on Twitter for an entire day. Oh, let's be honest. They they haven't been trusted for a long time. I don't know, man. Remember? I I saw it on the internet, and it <laughs> says it there. So why, ANN, why? Sure, but they, these are the same people that, you know, remember their, their diversity writer, you know, suggested I, the number one anime of that particular year was uh, Diary of a 30-year-old MMO junkie who was directed by, like, this very anti-Muslim, oh. anti-Jewish... Oh, man, I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. Oh no! And then there was also the fact that they endorsed. They took money from a anime to promote this anime film that was made by the Church of Om, which was a extreme right wing cult who believes that Donald Trump is the next reincarnation of Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> no! No! Good, no way! Who, they actually believe in who, God Emperor Trump. What the fuck? What the who fuck? Murdered Nineteen <laughs> people on New Year's. Wait, what? I'm sorry. Was, to God. What? What did they do? They, I was laughing too hard. They, I'm sorry. They, they stabbed like nineteen people. Holy in Tokyo. shit! And, like it was, a, it was like it was covered by CNN and all the big crowds, and it's like this is like, the downfall of AMS. <laughs> I mean, it's guys, guys, I, I'm, I'm learning so much. I mean, I read A and N on a uh, on a on a daily basis, and I've never even heard of that. <laughs> I'm, I'm really starting not to believe that, that, that they are the most trusted, uh, most trusted anime news source. I I am I'm, I'm shocked, guys. 
is is this is, is this 2019? I think they were also involved with the siren gas attacks in the 80s. Jesus. <laughs> Your your heroes your heroes A and N good job. <laughs> okay. Oh man, that is crazy. Yeah, no, but I, I I'm looking at the responses on, on on Twitter to to these leaks, right? And pretty much the the I would say like you were talking about earlier, Dean. Everyone's just pointing out the hypocrisy in it, right? But. Mm-hmm. I, and I really hate having these arguments with people, it just in general, where you are arguing a point, right? You're saying, this proves this. And so the other person looks at it and goes, well, I mean, I really can't refute that. So I'm just going to argue something totally different that you're not even saying. I'm yeah. going like, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to search through, uh, I'm going to search all through the web until I can find one person making that argument. And, and that's everybody now. And you're all idiots. Ha, I win. Yeah. Um, well, I actually I have a lot to say about this, and I know you do, but let's uh, let's hear what our guest has to say. Oh about God! It. Yes, I talk too much. All right. So, like, I, I, I listened to the, all the footage. Some of them are actually quite funny. Some of them, are like, I can understand why this wasn't, you know, released to the public. Oh, of and, course. And you know, I I heard, you know, supposedly, you know, they apologized to the public back in 2004 or something like that at a, at a panel one year. And it's like, the, all right, this is the first time this has ever been leaked. Okay. Uh, yeah. The, supposedly, you know, they're only outtakes. Uh, you haven't heard a ghost story. Let, let, let's, be, let's be honest here, guys. The, the script writer that was involved with make, adapting ghost stories he did have to follow this, uh, a contract with the original company over in Japan that, you know, they couldn't change the names, they couldn't change the actual story themselves. Uh, but besides that, you have to keep your car blocked. And probably it's a lot more tighter for Toei because it's still, you know, it's a family company. And a little bit, you know, not in the same way that, you know, Sean Shamble with all those jokes about the incest going. That's a different situation. Different family here, guys. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I understand, you know, there's outtakes, you know, so there's some great anime outtakes out there, but, you know, you can't compare it to Disney because, all right, Disney can make whatever's hidden material or hidden porn of their own material because it's their own material. Yeah. No. Animation yeah. is, a, is a licensor that, uh, they were, you know, sub-licensing it to other countries, such as Manga Entertainment. Unfortunately, yeah. they bought out Manga recently. Uh, and now, you know, Sony is super clean thing since the whole leap with, you know, back with PlayStation all those years ago. You know, between Sony, I, you know, they're seeing all this stuff going down, and Toei, they've fired you know, voice actors for having a joint before. Mm-hmm. And it's a super quick, clean image. You know, that you're forgetting, all right, people grew up with Dragon Ball over here since, uh, you know, the late 80s, early, you know, mid-90s. Over here in the, the West, in America, and over in Ireland and the UK. Over in Japan, it's been around since the 80s. There's now, you know, parents with kids showing their stuff Toei does want to keep a clean image, so I think it is going to hurt their contract, whether they're going to, you know, increase the licensing cost or cut mm-hmm. them off completely and go to Bang Zoom or Ocean Group again. Yeah. No, I get you. Yeah, it just we just don't know the severity of how, how they're going to decide to um, yeah. go about it. No, it is... As far as Toei goes... Of course, they should be upset. But as far as, like, I don't know. It's it's hard, because, like, I'm not offended. But I do think Funimation should be worried because of Toei. You know? Like, it's... <sighs> I mean, here's the thing. And I, I would say that if this was all just blowing up over here, right? Um, we. 
we, we are kind of aware, at least from what we've been told, that uh, Toei knows what's going on over here, and they don't like it. Like, I don't know if they actually have an actual opinion on uh, on the actual situation itself. Like, they 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 know the parties involved, and they they decided who's innocent. No, they they're, they're in Japan. They're this major company. It's a scandal, and they're sitting there going, like, why the fuck is this out in the open? It's making us all look bad. It's making Dragon Ball look bad. So now, to yeah. top this all off, now you've had... Okay, so so let's cover the, 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 the major things, right? The first would be um, Yuki Matsusaki actually going out and tweeting the tweeting text in Japanese with the audio drama or attached to it, like all the recordings, and reporting it all to Toei and promising he is going to make sure that Toei sees it, right? So that's a little bit different mm-hmm. than, than, than it just happening here in the U.S., right? Um, the second is the actual nature of those audio dramas. Like, Toei is not going to be okay with it. <laughs> to- Toei is not going to be okay with it. it it's... it's mm-hmm. Japan is ultra conservative. They are not going to be okay with that. Period. Yeah. Then you move like, on it, to. The, oh, sorry. I was going to say the final, the final, final thing that I would say about it. And this is a little bit more minor, but if it's true, Toei is going to be pissed because Toei is greedy. Like to- Toei is the type of company that will copyright strike you for using a second of, of, of uh, footage or audio if they find it. Right. They don't care. Oh, yeah. They don't care. So you're going to tell me that Toei is somehow totally okay with the fact that um, Team Four Star is getting in over a million views on their videos, uh, parroting their content and and profiting off of it. But it's not Team Four Star that is. It's Funimation profiting because Funimation is the one that's collecting the money from Team Four Star. The... Isn't that still just a rumor right now? It is just a rumor, but like, do 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 you really not feel that something's wrong there? Look at all the other. I mean, par- poss- I, I, mean I'm, I'm, I mean, it's possible, but I'm, I'm gonna wait to. No, I, 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 I get it, and that's fine. I'm just sitting there going, like, it's a big enough rumor that, on top of everything else, Toei might just look into it, or Toei might be asking, like, why, why are these even out there? Like, if, if I had to guess. Team Four Star, and, and okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna speculate. I'm gonna I'm gonna theory craft. You can edit this whole thing out if you want to. But Team Four Star is rather friendly with Funimation in the sense that um, you remember when they actually brought them in for the uh, DBZ Kai, and then uh, Toei stepped in and kicked them out. From what I understand, yeah. Okay, Toei doesn't like it. Funimation's the one that's stepping in and saying, no, no, this stuff is good. Let, let's let it happen. Let's let it happen. Do you know what egomaniacs these psychopaths are? You think that they're okay with YouTubers gaining fame off what they believe is their work? No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going like, there's no fucking way they aren't getting something from it. Because otherwise they would have just shut it down because uh, they believe that, that, that they're the reasons why Dragon Ball is so big here. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at look at how Sean Schemmel reacts when they tried to bring in um, a, a different Another person. Goku. Yeah, they tried to bring in the the previous uh, Goku VA to to do the to, to do Goku Black, and Sean Schemmel lost his shit over it. Sean Schemmel mm-hmm. that, lost his shit over that's people even making the first fun his time. dub. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I, I my my point is these are egomaniacs. You think that they stepped in to defend a group that was gaining more popularity than them? Fuck no, 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 absolutely not. They're they're getting some type of money from this. They're getting some sort of compensation from all of this. I I I, I highly doubt out of the goodness of these people's non-existent hearts that they just decided to to let Team Four Star do what they wanted to. I could be wrong there. I just I doubt it entirely that this is all just some sort of amical arrangement and Funimation stepped in. Uh, in front of Toei and defended Team Four Star. I just yeah. I don't buy that shit for a second. Anyways, I, I <laughs> yeah, feel feel free to edit that whole part out, Dean, if you, if you don't like it. I just like. Yeah, man. no, I think I will. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, I'll keep it. <sighs> man, uh, I don't have much more to go over these Funimation audio dramas. At the end of the day, it's just. It's just straight up 
hypocritical. That's all it is. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't. No, but I people are like pulling up. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking through these tweets today. Um, everybody knows a uh, code from Anime Outsiders. You know, Gamergate, 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 Gamergate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so there's a, a tweet that I guess he got sent from uh, Chris Sabat, uh, in which he basically told him to shut up big uh seriously though this type of dialogue is good dying in your sleep is not um i don't know man they they like using that word a lot <laughs> they really do ah okay we got to move on to talking about something a little bit more fun to wrap up anime uh summer 2019 uh demon slayer was tw- uh, trended on twitter with episode 19 um you have uh my Hero Academia, the next season's coming out in, uh, just I think, uh, well, today's uh, August 31st, so I imagine in about a month or so we're going to have uh, uh, MHA. Uh, what are you excited for so far? What have you seen? Uh, give, give us the rundown on what, what people should watch, because uh, nobody can make up their minds when there's 50 different animes uh, every every six months. Yeah, uh... And one of the things uh, I've been, you know, keeping watching, uh, I've been pretty, you know, excited about is uh, Doctor Stone. I probably what I originally thought was just going to be, uh, it's they're in the in the future, and it was going to be a fighting series. I learned I learned a lot about you know engineering and how to make gunpowder out of this show. So it's been slowly teaching me different things. What's uh, what's your favorite episode so far? Uh, well, just for the you know for the sake of meme quality, I really enjoying uh, really enjoyed this week's episode because you know the the creation of mag- uh, magnets and the fact that they refer to science as magic. Mm-hmm. All the, oh, the don't, don't, people, don't, so, don't, oh, don't, <laughs> don't don't spoil anything else. I haven't seen it yet. Don't don't man stop stop. I haven't read the manga. I'm like in love with the anime right now. No, don't spoil it for uh, me, man. <laughs> no, well, I, uh, but this is in the anime. No, I know. I haven't seen the latest episode. Oh, you haven't seen the latest episode. But just for the mean quality of loan, that magnets are magic. I know. Fucking magnets. How do they work? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. If only if only we could get the Insane Clown Posse to, uh, to just show up in statuesque form. Well, I'm waiting to, you know, to start to them dubbing their own anime at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, you know what, um, Doctor Stone. So, what do you think of uh, Fire Force? Because I would say the the three animes that have like keep getting popped up to me, um, and I'm watching all of them, but I'm a little bit behind on the third one. Is is Fire Force? Like, I'm I'm all caught up on Demon Slayer. I gotta watch the latest episode of. Uh, I guess I gotta watch the latest episode of Demon Slayer and. Uh, uh, Dr. Stone. Fire Force, I'm like two episodes behind in and I feel terrible. Yeah, like, uh, you know, Fire Force is great sort of artistically and the fact that, you know, it's dated production, non-JoJo related uh, production at this point. Uh, I, I think it's, you know, great so far. It has a lot of similar feels to uh, you know, what was it? Uh, the the Exorcist one that was real, Blue Exorcist that came out a few years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. Has a very sort of similar fe- feel to that type of thing. So like, if you're a fan of the Hellboy comics, that type of aesthetic, I'd really sort of recommend it to the people like that. And just the action scenes alone, and the the anime just make it worth so much uh, while to watch. Yeah, I was. The thing that got me into it was learning that uh, it was uh, AG told or Aura Origami, our, our our lovely editor who who wasn't able to make it today. Um, he was telling me that it was created by um, the same person who did Soul Eater, and I was like, man. And you know, you watch it, and I, I get that vibe looking at the um, looking at the city in the background. I, I feel it, you know. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, so especially, you know, any of the scenes where they're actually fight, you know, fighting the fires. I, I, there's only so many times that you know you can make that look, you know, really good and crazy. But it just seems to be the case that you know that they keep outdoing themselves every single episode. 
it's the visual like I'll be frank with you when I'm watching Fire Force I don't really care so much about the story like I I I I kind of understand what's going on but it's the fights it's the spectacle it's it's beautiful and they've they've had it since the first episode where he just charges in um Hopefully, hopefully they, they, they keep that level of quality going throughout the entire series, um, because like, uh, you know, you know, One Punch Man, right? Yeah, that mm-hmm. first season, everything was just beautiful. You got sent uh, out of, I think it was, it left Studio Bones. I can't remember who it went to, um, but they, they, the animation just drops in quality like so much. And I, I think Fire Force, the thing that's really delivering is the is, is the quality of its animation. I'm not too sold on the story, and I only slightly like the main character. Like he's not my favorite main character so far. I don't know. Like maybe. Oh yeah, definitely. I just I but but when, when I watch those episodes and you just see the, the ah, man, it, it's beautiful. It really is. It's it is 100 beautiful. Dean, but, why, uh, why, why, yeah. why don't you give us your opinion on some anime? Um, sorry, sorry, I just hear my nieces running around, so, so I'm making sure they're not breaking stuff. Um, well, my opinion on some anime, well, I guess that just depends. Like, what type, what type of anime? Are we talking like my favorite type? Because, like, honestly, I've been thinking about it a lot, and I think Fully Cooly is actually my favorite. Oh, yeah, Curry, Curry Wilbur, no matter, you know, whether it's, you know, the original uh, six episodes or the, the two sequel series that sort of came out. And a lot of people hate it when it first, you know, the, the sequels, like, oh, no, it's not quite it. You kind of have to watch them all together to yeah. really kind of understand the grasp of it. And I know, like, it premiered over in America first, but in Japan, they just kind of went through all the episodes together. That's yeah, there was see, a delay the, I was actually thrown off just by the very first episode of the when um I forget which one it's called, but it was like it it was the very first episode that they showed of the sequel series, and it was just they just tried to like mirror the first episode of the original, and yeah, just, it didn't it didn't work for me. Okay, see, I don't like when they do... Like, if you want to pay an homage, you can do that. But you got to do your own thing. This was just like a complete oh. recreate. How was the like, music? It was cool. I don't know. It was It was the still pre- the same. It's still the same band. Because uh, the, the original Fully Cooly, I love their uh, the intro and the outro. What's their name again? Do you know their the name? The Pillows. Yes, The Pillows. Hold on. Let's see... To the pillows. It's the pillows. Yeah. I was trying to get like the names of the other songs. Well, the guys, are, are you looking forward to Uzumaki coming out? Wait, what? Uzumaki, uh, Jinji, uh, Ido's, uh, horror manga, based, you know, translated as Spiral, as is getting adapted and being released uh, in a couple of months. Oh. Uzumaki. I didn't even know that. Okay. Yeah, it's a town that's basically being slowly tortured and manipulated by spirals. So, like, people start contouring into actual spirals and people becoming obsessed with them. That actually sounds pretty dope. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at a couple of the images, and damn, is it crazy. Oh, yeah. and uh, uh, Going back on to the whole A&M thing, A&M... Uh, at Comic Con this year, voted his uh, one of his latest works as one of the worst ever manga of 2018. Wow. Wait, wait, wait. What? This one here they voted as the worst manga? No, it was called a uh, Resolution Classroom. Resolution Classroom. I'm just getting like. Uh... Anyway, if anyone wants to know what I'm doing, I'm just getting all these uh, things to look into. Watching, watching, watching. Yeah, the two other ones that were like voted for like worst manga of, of last year is Bakano, which I thought everyone enjoyed Bakano. Bakano, like, 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 yeah, like the Bakano anime. 
Yeah. Apparently the manga was considered the worst just last year. Damn. And another one was like Fruits Basket. Really? I was like, wait, those are really popular shows. What the hell happened here? Yeah, no, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, I'm like... Because <laughs> uh, Bacchano, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, was the, the same person who did that. He did Dramara, right? Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, in fact, there is two characters from Bacchano that appear in Dramara. Yeah, hmm. so I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there going like... This... Ah, oh, man, I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I have no clue. What the hell? <laughs> oh shoot, um, guys, it's uh, it's been about an hour, so we're gonna have to go ahead and wrap up. Cool. Uh, any other anime recommendations you would give, and uh, why would you recommend JoJo's, which is the best? Oh Jesus. Well, uh, JoJo's is probably you know one of the greatest things because whether you know anime and manga has been in the Louvre. Or cause the boycott to Japan. Oh shit! No way. When the when Stardust Crusaders first got a uh, license, the original OAV. Yeah. Uh, the scene of Dio. Yeah. Uh, I think it was only made in the 2000s. It's for the video game, and there was going to be like a Phantom Blood film, which is supposedly like a lost media because it was so bad. But Jotaro versus I've I've seen the I thought it was from the eighties though Jotaro versus D O O V A. Oh, oh nineteen ninety three Jesus. Yes, yeah, so. Uh, oh, you know I'm going to send you this it in caused, the Discord. It, so you it caused it out a, later. It caused a boycott in Egypt because D O was caught reading the the Quran. <sighs> So I, I put something into the uh, We're Just Saiyans chat. It's, uh, I, I've seen this a couple times. It's uh, JoJo versus Dio. Um, it's the 1993 OVA, but it's got the uh, dubbing, or, or, or the, the, the actual uh, Japanese audio playing in it. It's fucking great. Oh, no. The, the, the best scene in that OAV is, is Jotaro versus Derby. Oh, no, I haven't seen the Jotaro vs. Darby from the I've only seen the Dio fight from the OVA. Oh, it is absolutely fantastic and completely over the top, because every time that Darby blinks, he's like, wait, he has a lit cigarette in his hand, how the hell did that happen? Yeah. You're just expecting, like, oh, the next next time he blinks, you know, some more, you know, Jotaro is going to be, you know, being sucked off by some hooker. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man, I gotta see this. This is crazy. I didn't. I I knew that. I knew that um, the OVA is like an hour something plus long, but I've only ever watched the uh, the the fight with uh, Dio. So this stuff's really funny to watch. Oh man, this is gonna be great. Anyways, um, we do need to head out. I I gotta go to work in like thirty minutes. Oh man, I gotta get Dean the laptop to do all this editing. Oh boy. Already, sure. yeah. All right, let's go ahead and do our outro. Um, and now we like to do something very special with our outros here at Geek Ire. Geek Ire. <laughs> but not, yeah, cool. I'm reading. I I, I see. I I've been saying Geek Ire because that's how I pronounce Ire. Yeah, it's uh, era is Irish for Ireland. Oh really? Shit, that's Irish. Yep. Damn, I should know that. We're Irish. Ish. Like we, we got we got very. I'm very... shaking my head so hard right now. <laughs> we, we got like we got like a little bit of Irish blood in us, and that's that's it. So we get to, we get to claim it, even though we really shouldn't. That's how it works, right, Dean? See, I'm shaking my head in disappointment at you so hard right now. <laughs> oh, I, I, we've had Americans that come over here and claim that you know my great 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 grandmother's you know Scottish Terrier was half Irish. I I, I, I I can't remember where I saw it. I think it was a tweet by um gosh, uh thinking on his name so hard. I don't it wasn't Carpe Doncta, maybe it was uh the, the guy who did the um 
who got his uh, dog to do that Nazi salute, the the little pug thing. Oh yeah, Count Dankula. Count Dankula. Yeah, I remember Count Dankula was uh he, he tweeted something out like somebody called themselves Irish and then fucking uh, Count Dankula just went off on them. It's the funniest shit. <laughs> I, I I know it's a sensitive subject. I had to I had to make the joke. I'm sorry. I know it, it, it's fine. Everyone makes that joke. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you so much, though. Um, really appreciate it, uh, Geek Era, for uh, show for for showing up, uh, doing the recording with us, uh, giving giving us the uh, details about Facebook, your case with them. Um, honestly, I I I talked a lot. But that was definitely my favorite part of uh, having you on here is learning all about that. Um, the anime stuff, uh, going over that, um, talking about the situation with the Vic Mignogna thing. But um, the things going on with Facebook, I think, affect literally everybody. And I'm, I'm really glad that you're sharing that, that, that story and all that information. Glad that, you know, glad that you guys found it interesting at least. I, I I do like like this stuff uh, like Dean 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 and I I think we are pretty much on the same page here. Um, the, the stuff that these social media companies do, the amount of power and influence they have is just absolutely horrifying. Oh yeah, no, it's it's disgusting. All right, man. Again, uh, thank you so much, everybody. Um, uh, please, well, please. Ho- hold on, hold on. Geek Era, why don't you uh, tell everybody where they can find you? Um, Sure, my podcast is Geek Era 2.0. We are on Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, uh, some apps that I can't get access to because I live in Ireland and it's region blocked. <laughs> uh, but pre- pre- and Castbox, pretty much anywhere you can find a, a, an iTunes. Perfect. And we're not going to get caught with copyright strikes, so we can actually play anime music. <laughs> No, that's good. That's good. Perfect. And um, just so everybody knows, links to all of Geek Era's um, social medias will be in the description below. And please uh, make sure that you check out the podcast. Like I was saying earlier, um, Insane's is your new co-host. Uh, she She's great. Um, Sean, you've been an amazing guest with us today. Uh, so I And I've had a chance to watch a, a few of the episodes so far. There, there's a lot there. So I, I think that anybody who is really interested in just just listening to to things going on uh with anime really needs to check it out cool